Speaking to strangers online and making digital friends is only for weirdos, right? This is something only for geeks and socially challenged kids who hole up in their parents' basements and never see the light of day. Online forums and chat rooms are for trolls who are only out to anger people they do not know. This is what I always thought until I found myself forming some of the best friendships of my life through an online community. Let's rewind back to 2008. I was 19 years old, freshly out of high school, and spent roughly 8 hours a day dancing ballet in Philadelphia. The only form of social media I had used were Facebook and MySpace. When I asked my friend Nicole what she used back then for communicating, she replied, I first got into social media way back when it first came out because it was kind of the new thing back then, and it was exciting, and everyone, everyone was interested in it, and I was interested in it too, so I just wanted to know what it was all about. Like Nicole, I only got into social media because of my older brother, who was in college at the time. He convinced me it was the future of communication, and I happily took the bait. While there was no doubt I was busy training my life away, I listened to music, other than the lively pianists in the ballet studio, every spare second I could find. Center City workers could see me riding Patco daily with earbuds in my ears. My bun head bopped and my toes tapped. Who was I listening to? Jewel, of course. Do you remember Jewel? She had that huge hit singing about being meant for you, including eggs and pancakes too, in the 90s. She is the prolific songwriter who wrote about her small hands, foolish games, and questioned who would save her soul if she wouldn't save her own. Yes, that jewel. I was in love with her poetry for years, regularly analyzed her work in her book of poems, A Night Without Armor, and she was always the top played artist in my CD player. This also happened to be the same year I bought my first laptop, a clunky 2007 Dell that was much too large for everyday travel. After listening to Jewel nonstop for what seemed like years, I decided to check her out online. As it turned out, she had a huge online fan community. Score! Enter the Everyday Angels. Who are these angels, you ask? Every proper fan group has an official name, and the Everyday Angels, EDAs, are, na are named after a lyric in the song, I'm Sensitive, from Jewel's 1995 debut album, Pieces of You. I logged into Jewel's official website 10 minutes after I programmed my shiny new computer and saw an avatar of a fan named Nicole. She had blonde hair, and she looked to be about my age. As I read through message threads, her posts kept making me laugh. This girl seems so cool. I clicked on her profile and saw that she lived in Connecticut. It was the spring of 2008 and Jewel was about to go on tour with Brad Paisley the upcoming summer. Like any good fan, I bought a ticket and showed up to see Jewel sing at the Susquehanna Bank Center in Camden, New Jersey in August. Nicole saw the show three days before I did in Connecticut. This girl Nicole was still a total stranger but we both posted such, such similar reviews of our concerts that it had me curious. We were both total balls of excitement on screen. She and I exchanged private messages with our phone numbers and had our first phone call that week. Within five minutes on the phone, I knew this girl would be a friend. She was funny, just the right amount of weird, and I loved her instantly. I recently asked Nicole what her first impression was of me online, and she thought I was cool. Quote, I thought we had a lot in common, since we were around the same age, and I could relate to you because of that. Um, yeah, I just thought you were cool. You were someone who I would hang out with. Time passed, and our fandom grew. Massively grew. The next summer, I was out dancing in Austin, and made plans with Nicole to catch a Greyhound bus up north to Hartford, Connecticut as soon as I arrived home in New Jersey. After a year of talking online and over the phone, she and I were finally going to meet in person. Would she be just like I built her up to be? Would she match her online persona? Was I totally insane for meeting up with someone who I met online? My mind was full of questions during that long bus trip to Connecticut. As it turned out, she was even more hilarious in real life, and we hit it off right away. 
I asked Nicole, I asked Nicole if her opinion of me changed when we finally met in person, and she felt like I was the same. She said when we met, it was like we knew each other already. I agree. When I asked Nicole to briefly explain how we met, she summed it up in two sentences. Quote, we were both fans of Jewel, and we met online, and we started going to her shows together. It started to become a thing, and we just hung out, outside of her shows as well. Nicole and I tweeted Jewel a picture of us together, telling her we were hanging out in person, and she replied right away, saying we looked cute, and she was glad two great fans finally met. Needless to say, we lost our cool. Jewel knew who we were, she liked us, and we were in the same room together for the first time. How could the situation get better? Oh, it does. Just wait and see. As time passed, yet again, Nicole had the brilliant idea to create the Nicole and Ashley show and center it on the latest Jewel news. A Jewel fan show? This was a first. Nicole says, Our show started off just by Ashley and me creating a hypothetical show. Like, wouldn't it be funny if we made a show starring us talking about Jewel stuff? Of course we went through with it, and of course Jewel loved it. Ha ha. We began by uploading weekly shows to YouTube, and it was not long at all before Jewel and management's attention was caught. They loved it. They loved us. Jewel sent us a casual tweet saying she wanted to hook us up to attend a concert together so we could both meet her. Yes, we lost our cools again. As it turned out, Jewel wanted to meet us just as badly as we wanted to meet her. She was undeniably curious. Let's fast forward to that hooked up concert which took place in Baltimore, Maryland in October of 2010. Judging by Twitter and the online forum, this was going to be a huge Everyday Angel meetup concert. Needless to say, I was thrilled. It was so much fun to share my fandom with other massive fans whom I had also talked to online for a couple years prior. This Baltimore show was going to be epic and it did not disappoint. Nicole and I met up with Jewel in her dressing room before the show, shared hugs, laughs, asked her fun questions, and formed a genuine bond. The Nicole and Ashley show became an underground hit among the EDAs, and everyone seemed to know who we were at any concert we attended. This still happens regularly and has been pretty fun, I must admit. In 2011, Jewel hosted a free concert in Texas for her hardest of hardcore fans to attend. This was the ultimate meeting of online friends from all over the world. Forum friends I never met in person showed up from Paris, Brazil, and even Australia. Those four days in Texas were some of the most incredible days of my life. It almost makes me tear up thinking about how different we all are whether it be sexuality, language, looks, political beliefs, we all share the same bond, the love of lyrics. This three and a half hour long concert called TexFest blew the doors wide open for the fruition of online friendships into actual real life friendships. Little did I know I would fly to France a couple years after this to vacation with everyday angel Emily from Paris. Little did I know I would end up visiting London to have the cheapest trip ever by staying with fan Michelle in her spare bedroom. Of course, there is more to these friendships formed online than just having a personal tour guide in foreign countries, but that certainly is a huge perk. Nicole and I have kept our friendship strong since I first spotted her blonde hair avatar nearly seven years ago. She and I get to interview Jewel before every concert we see, but our interviews are known for simply turning into casual conversation to catch up with each other's lives. Once in a while, since it has been made obvious we have run out of questions, Jewel will turn the tables and begin to interview us. She knows personal details about our lives, inquires about our happiness, and always asks if our friendship still holds strong. Nicole and I have almost become the unofficial reps for Jewel's online fan community. In March of 2013, 300 members of the fan community were invited to her live album recording in Nashville, Tennessee. Jewel wanted her truest fans to be in attendance in an intimate venue to record tracks for her upcoming 2015 album, 
picking up the pieces. Once again, all of my friends from the digital sphere gathered in one place and turned Nashville upside down. Since we only get to see each other once every, every few years for the most part, we make the most of it every time. My internet friends and I honky-tonk hopped, took center stage at a karaoke bar full of hopeful singers waiting to be discovered, and stayed up laughing until the sun rose. Aside from having the common interest of Jewel, the fans have found many other commonalities over the years. I, for example, have found that a few other EDAs share my same huge love for the TV show Friends. Years ago, we had a thread full of Friends trivia that was constantly out to stump and up the game to the prior post's question. Fans bonded over recipe sharing, political stories, and political arguments, fashion, books, movies, to many other interests to mention. Every year, the EDAs take part in a secret Santa that turns into a giant exchange of gifts mailed all over the world. Aside from it being just flat-out fun to receive a present, Secret Santa is what truly ties us together and is what introduces strangers quite quickly to form fast friendships. Last year, we had nearly 100 people from all over the globe take part in a gift exchange. Usually, fans end up sending a gift to someone they have never met in person. Although some of their friends have never met in the flesh, they usually have known each other digitally for over a decade. Barton and Hamilton discuss and explain discourse communities in their article, Situated Literacies, Reading and Writing in Context. They go on to say that discourse communities are held together by their characteristic ways of talking, acting, valuing, and interpreting and using written language. The everyday angels fall under this category and can absolutely be considered a discourse community in every way. Aside from the daily forum posts, tweets, Facebook messages, we send snail mail quite regularly that consists of unrecorded songs on CDs, for example. Rheingold states, The mindful use of digital media doesn't happen automatically. When I think back to 2008, I was very new to the online communication scene and spent quite a lot of time adapting to the community. Rheingold also says that it is essential for a person living in the 21st century to adapt to online tools because that is where our culture is heading. It makes me laugh to reflect on my initial judgments of online friendships. Little did I know some of my best friends would be folks I met in an online forum.